Hi XR developers! In this video, I'm excited to show you some improvements that come with the Meta XR SDK version 62. We're going to look at multimodal, wide motion mode, or WMM for short, and CapSense, which lets us use hands and controllers seamlessly together. Also, we're going to look at how to implement interactions in mere seconds, and then we're going to look at Meta's new comprehensive sample, which comes with new UI elements and also has some new interactions. If you like this type of content, Please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to get access to the source code or special projects, please consider supporting me on Patreon. If you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now let's get started with improvements to our hand tracking and the interaction SDK by Meta. First, as always, let's set up a new Unity project with the Meta XR SDK. Use the all-in-one package, or if you are using the core package, make sure that you also install the interaction SDK. For this video, we also want to install the Interaction SDK samples. Make sure that you also download the example scenes from the Samples tab in the Package Manager. And of course, make sure to set your project up correctly by using Meta's Project Setup tool and switch the platform over to Android if you'd like to test your scenery on your device later. With that out of the way, let's head over to the Interaction samples and open up the Concurrent Hands Controllers Examples scene. In this scene, multimodal is already set up for us. Let's quickly cover the basic requirements for multimodal. We need a Quest 2, 3 or Pro, Unity 2021 LTS or later, and of course, the Interaction SDK in version 62 or later. And important to note, multimodal is not compatible with wide motion mode, which we will look at in a second. It is therefore also not compatible with inside out body tracking and full body synthesis. Furthermore, Multimodal shouldn't be enabled together with Fast Motion Mode, or FMM for short. We looked at this feature shortly in a previous video, and it is used for improved tracking of fast hand movements. We can still keep it enabled, but it won't give us any improved tracking as long as multimodal is active. Lastly, multimodal cannot be used with tracked keyboards. If a user has a tracked keyboard active, the tracked keyboard will take precedence. Setting up multimodal in our existing or new project is extremely easy. All we have to do is go to our OVR Manager component and check the checkbox for simultaneous hands and controllers enabled. Also, further down, make sure that you also check the checkbox to launch simultaneous hands and controllers at start and choose controllers and hands for the hand tracking support. If you want to use multimodal, make sure that under the tracking space of your OVR camera rig, you have a left-hand anchor detached, as well as a right-hand anchor detached game object. If we want to use the OVR controller prefab, this is where we would attach it. Then we could select which side the controller is on, and if it should be represented as only a controller or a controller in hands. However, Meta uses a different approach in this sample. If we open the OVR interaction, we can see that Meta simply added an OVR hands and an OVR controller driven hands prefab. If we open them up, we can see that they also simplified the setup. Namely, we can now set up controllers exactly like hands, except for adding also visual representations of controllers with controller synthetic. Fantastic. Let's finally give this a try. We can interact with the object on the table with and controller or hand we want at the same time. We can have a controller on one side and just use our hands on the other side. Great. Let's now take a look at wide motion mode. It allows us to track hands even when they are outside the headset's field of view. This is achieved by running inside out body tracking, or IOBT for short, and using the estimated hand position when hand tracking is lost. To visualize this, we can import another set of samples, which is the features examples. Here we would like to open the debug body joint scene. This scene has already set up the inside out body tracking for us, I will make a dedicated video on how to set it up in the future. To enable wide motion mode, make sure to enable the checkbox that says wide motion mode, hand poses enabled, and set the body tracking support to required. Optionally, under movement tracking, you have the option to change the body tracking fidelity and joint set. Fantastic. Let's give this scene a try. As you can see, based on the movement of the rest of our body, we can still see our hands relatively smoothly even though they are not in our field of view anymore. Amazing. Let's now look at the last 
hand feature from Meta, which recently made it out of beta, which is the CapSense hands. We basically already covered CapSense. If you remember how our OVR camera rig was set up in the last scene, let's jump back to look at it once more. Firstly, we simply have to select the state the hands and controllers will be in when tracked. If we open up our left OVR hand, for example, we can see that the state has been set to always. This means our hands are always shown, even if we are holding a controller. If you remember the gameplay from before, this has been true. The second step to using CapSense is to adjust some settings on the OVR manager. There is a new property named Controller Driven Hand Poses Type. It includes three options. The first one is None. This means that hand poses will only ever be populated with data from the tracked cameras if hand tracking is active. Next is Conforming to Controller. This means that hand Poses generated from controller data will be located around the controller model. Lastly, there is natural. Poses generated with this option will be positioned in a more natural state, as if the user was not holding a controller. Great! And that's already it for the hand tracking improvements. Let's switch over to the Interaction SDK. If you remember, I presented the building blocks to you in a previous video, which makes it super easy now to set up our scene and make our OVR camera rig ready for interactions. However, what if we have an existing scene and want to make our objects immediately interactive? Well, Meta has now come up with another helper tool, which is the Quick Actions menu. Let me demonstrate this. Let's add a cube to our scene and position it on our table. Now, right-click on the cube, go down to Interaction SDK, and select Add Grab Interaction. Apply all the fixes and click on Create. Meta has now added all grabbable components to our cube and equipped our OVR camera rig with the necessary grab interactors. Everything in just a few seconds. Let's give it a test. And as you can see, this just works perfectly right away. How awesome is that? Now, before we wrap up this video, let's take a quick look at the most exciting sample scene of them all. The comprehensive rig example scene. Meta really gives us some amazing samples here that we can directly use for our own apps. We have a comprehensive menu system with a library of items. We can move, scale, and rotate the whole panel, and the items will automatically adjust to it. We also have our objects from previous interaction examples that we are already used to. The difference is that we now have a super cool tooltip that is shown based on if we look at the item with our gaze interactor. Also, the distance grab interaction looks amazing, which the debug view of the item in the user's hand before the item is actually grabbed. Furthermore, we get an amazing video player sample that lets us implement our own logic for several settings, very similar to a YouTube player. This scene also includes locomotion. We can teleport as well as turn around by using our hands. Lastly, there is a distance grab at source interaction. This one is really interesting because it is basically the opposite of a distance grab interaction where we see our hands on the object instead of the object in our hands. Fantastic. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I think the new samples are amazing and the improvements are really significant. I hope you enjoyed it as well and got some inspiration for your own project. Please, if you have a second, like and subscribe to this channel. Support me on Patreon if you want to get access to the source code. Or if you have any questions, join our XR Developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.